Hey guys, it's Matt here. I'm coming you coming to you today here uh, through uh, my computer, which I usually am. Even though we're together in heaven right now, if you don't realize it or not. Hello. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about contemplation today with you. Mystical infused contemplation, which is a gift from God. It's actually um, God in us, causing us to gaze upon him. It's Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit revealing themselves to us, in us. And even as us somehow, in a mystical uh, supernatural union, face to face intimacy, that it causes us to relax and be at rest and at ease. Because contemplation is, is a gift from God, first and foremost. It's the very being of God, of Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, infused into our being in such a way that they, they cause us to see them or intimate, intimately know them and perceive them and trust them the most intimate, deep places of our being, our spirit, and the faculties of our spirit that, that perceive them and their reality about things, their intimate reality about things, where we see them everywhere. But yeah, they, so like I said, they, infuse their being their beings already infused in into us but this contemplation this gift of contemplation this gazing upon god this practice of the presence this awareness of god's presence that their presence that's already in us awakens us to you know this gift of beholding them gazing upon them, gazing upon us, being present with their presence that is already present with us. This causes us to, yes, enter into their rest. We, we become so at ease because we're aware of them. But yeah, it's actually, it's beyond our mind. It's deeper than our mind. And it's even deeper than our feelings of God, like in our body and soul, and even some areas of our spirit. But it's actually the very deepest part of us. It's an effortless thing. And there is a little bit of effort involved in, in a certain sense of where, you know, we're kind of choosing empowered by their grace to stay facing them you know it's like we're, we're like this kind of i'll give an example and an analogy we're like this flower and we become aware of the sunlight it's almost it's almost like god is the sunlight and we're the flower and the flower is designed to open its petals to the sunlight as the flower senses the sunlight through the sunlight. So God kind of opens our eyes of our heart, you know, like the petals of the flower. You know, as we feel the sun, as the sun causes us to open our eyes to him, Jesus and Abba and Holy Spirit, you know, the brilliant light that's within us. You know, the Bible says you see light through the light. And so we're seeing God through God. It's like 
only the spirit of God knows God. So it's like this deep thing, but God's attached to us. God's not only just attached to us, but he's one with us. He's filling us in every way, especially that deep, intimate place of us. And and he he turns it in, in a certain sense. He's opening the petals, opening our eyes to see him. And so we, when we start seeing him there, He's drawing us, he's calling us into this intimate awakening, this intimate abiding, you know, this intimate beholding and gazing upon him in us, gazing upon us in perfect love and perfect soundness and perfect rest and tranquility and peace. And he causes us to want to, because it's our true self, it's, it's an effortless thing, but it's somewhat, it's kind of an effortless effort. Or it's like you're choosing, you're, you're, you know, you're like you're totally free to reject it if you want, like like to turn back and become distracted by lesser things again. So 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 you know the petals kind of close, your eyes sort of, in a certain sense, you know, you're kind of closing your eyes again, and then eventually he'll open your he's opening your eyes again, and we can close our eyes again. But eventually he wants us to learn that yes, he's beyond our mind. But he's in our mind. He's beyond our body, but he's in our body. He's beyond our soul. He's in our soul. You know, he's deeper than these things. He's higher than these things, but and he's fully in us. But he wants us to get to the place where we're beyond those our mind and things. Like because he's beyond it. He's deeper. We're deeper than that too. And our true self is this intimate childlike person that's gazing upon our Abba Jesus Holy Spirit within us as their gaze upon us and and then our mind is at ease and we're not getting drawn away drifted by all these different voices and opinions about God or whatever or things in the world you know what can give you pleasure satisfaction you know all these things that aren't coming from the true intimate knowing of our union with the Trinity, we're, we're seeing through that stuff because we're seeing with through within our hearts, we're seeing everything for what it really is. And we see all things as light. And we see all those other things are just figments of our imagine figments of people's imaginations. And that it, those things don't ultimately define us or anyone or God but only this intimacy that God is and that this intimacy that God is within us intimate with us def is really truly what de defines us and defines everyone it defines God it's this living tangible heartbeat it's this, this God himself not this other thing you know God isn't our thoughts even our best thoughts about God he transcends that he, he's a being that has to personally reveal himself to you so when we understand that we can kind of rest because we're like we can't fully figure God out with our mind although there's good thoughts that are more true about God than, than some other ones that are less true about God. You know, like God isn't bad, God isn't dark, God isn't some crazy schizophrenic judge. But no, God is a lover, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're, they're light, there's no shadow of turning in them. They're kind, they're gentle, they want to heal us of our wounds. They don't want to punish us for doing bad things. But they want to heal us of those wounds that cause us to do those bad things. They're not judging us for it, but they're loving us and they're choosing. Sometimes it gets translated as judging. They're choosing to always love us. They're always esteeming us, welcoming us, in us, around us, and through us. Like Abba, Jesus, Holy Spirit, all in and all. So yeah, we, we, we understand that. Those things I'm saying, yes, that's coming from my mind, but it's also coming from my heart. It's something I've peered into. It's something that we can peer into. And it's all a gift. It's this infused contemplation. It, it's, it's a gift that they give to us. 
And another part of this is once you see that, you know, it's, it's, it's a gift, you know, you know, that's part of how you rest because you're not trying to make it happen, but it's God inviting you into it. It's God ravishing and lavishing you with, you know, through all your senses too, at times for sure, but, but with his true self within you. God only has a true self, but, you know, there's fake things that we think about ourselves and about God, but um, God's self within us um, and this intimacy, it just causes us to come to ease and at rest because it's like, I don't need to try to so hard to figure God out as if you're like, because sometimes we can think that we need to figure God out in the sense of like, once I finally have God figured out, then I'm going to finally be in a lasting experience with him. You know, part of that is somewhat true, yes, but um, it's not a transaction. God doesn't need us to figure him out in order for us to, in order for him to finally pour himself out through us. But God wants to pour himself out through us just because he's God, just because he's love. And he wants this more than us. And so we, we um, I think you know what I'm saying. Um, I think I know what I'm saying so, somewhat. Yeah. Uh, because there is, because, you know, sometimes I could be, you know, studying things about God is in that, and that's amazing. That's awesome. God wants us to be doing that. Um, but in order for me to try to get that experience, really what God has been teaching me and what he wants to teach all of us is that you don't need to like yes i want you to think good things about me but you're actually unlearning the type of god that was a stickler that was withholding things from you and then you had to believe in order for me to give you things but what we're actually believing is that god has given us everything that god's within us that it's his job to reveal that to us and sustain us to be able to stay looking at that And then all these, yeah, that very root that I'm talking about, it's the very root of the fall, the very root of religion, of trying to do something to become more like God, to get God to become more close to you, more in you or something. No, but this is an unconditional thing that God, you know, reveals to us and he untethers us from all those conditions that we placed on ourselves, that the world and religion placed on us and everyone. Through the fall of Adam and Eve and mankind, it's the fall where we were believing lies about ourselves. So in this contemplation, we we this whole even when we believe lies about ourselves, you know, we're and it's good to you know go you know maybe therapy sometimes or talking through someone, you know, going to confession or just whatever, praying with someone, doing you know reading scriptures, getting our mind renewed. But the the best mind renewals. You know, go hand in hand with that. But the best mind renewals is where we're not, you know, we're, we're sitting loosely, openly. We're kind of accepting everything is just as it is. Like, it's like, okay, yes, I believe the lies about myself, but I'm not going to try to fight these off in a certain sense. Like, try to ch try to supernaturally change my own mind. But it says, you know, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It's It's that intimate place of us, our most intimate place. And it flood, it's the rivers of living water flooding. You see Jesus as he is, and you can't help but have your mind renewed. You know, it says his his kindness leads you into repentance, which is the word metanoia that means to change your mind. So we don't get overly worked up and attached to this process of trying to think more clear or even get things from God. But we see that, wow, to think clear about how we already have everything from God. We already have the fullness of God within us. He's already, he's happy with us. He's light. He's amazing. He's loving. He's kind. You know, this is all a gift that we get to rest in. You know, we're, we're not chasing. We're not trying to make happen. But he's fully made it happen inside of us in Jesus' incarnation, life, death, resurrection, ascension, glorification and seatedness in a posture of rest in his Abba's lap as all mankind. So it's really this finished work, revelation, that we have in our minds, in our hearts, in our whole being. It goes hand in hand with this contemplation. We're actually contemplating that reality. 
that reality is contemplating us. It's, it's our true mode of being. It's an effortless thing that causes us to, it's actually the full strength of our being that's awakened and enlightened to stay aware of his ravishing, lavishing love upon us, in us, around us, and through us in our most intimate places. So we're living out from our innermost, being out from our belly, our, our noose, as the Greek says, you know, it, it's this intimate faculty of like how you interpret reality. God is transforming, he's transfiguring that, the, you know, the more we drink of him, like, like the more that we realize this finished work, we're, he's awakening us to this finished work, you know, you know, it's faith, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by this word of God, like we're, the, the gospel of Christ. Well, when we hear this word of God, Jesus Christ, who is the gospel, the good news, the God man, how we have his fullness like he does. And, you know, it's a finished work. We've been glorified with him. We're in a posture of rest with him. He loves us. He's here. He's happy. Abba's happy. He's just like Jesus and Holy Spirit. We're just like them, made in their image. You know, that really helps to clear us up because ultimately what this contemplation is doing is causing our mind, you know, the faculties of our thinking interpreting, you know, is causing those faculties of our mind to line up with our heart. And then we can live really truly whole. Well, we're living out of intimacy and our thoughts are flooded by this intimacy, informed and enlightened by this intimacy. We're flooded with this light and we see his light everywhere. We see the good news everywhere. We don't see anyone according to the flesh, according to a fallen point of view, but we see the whole world is new. Everything is new. Everyone is reconciled. And it's this power, this power of the gospel. And this is the truest prayer. And all you can really do, like, you know, the Apostle Paul is just say, thank you. You know, some people said saying thank you is like the greatest prayer. It's like the greatest type of New Testament prayer because we see we have it all. And all there is left to do is celebrate. But yeah, it's this rest, too. We're like we're This vibrant, life-giving rest of satisfaction. Because Abba, Jesus, Holy Spirit, see that it's finished. And they're they're tranquil, they're at ease, they're at peace. They see that nothing else needs to be done. And that's the big that's a big part of the, what we're contemplating. We're contemplating this God who's at rest and at happy, our happy Abba. And it's like like you can perceive him. You perceive him sitting there with you, standing there with you, gazing upon you with this constant care of love and light and goodness and mercy and peace and joy, reconciliation, hugs and kisses and dancing and playing. And you just hear him, you see him everywhere in life. You hear him everywhere in life. He's guiding you with his righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You're the apple of his eye. And we're one with him. We're intimate with him. We're his body. And we're flowing together in this seamless union. And we're not trying to to uh, figure out our will, God's will for our life. But we are his will, which you know means desire. We are his desire. And our design is his desire. He created us in the image of his desire, which is his son, Jesus. And, and so his will is for us to enjoy him as he, you know, is enjoying Jesus and Jesus is enjoying him. He, you know, that's his desire to enjoy Jesus as Jesus is enjoying him. That's that, that's Abba. That's God's Jesus and Holy Spirit's will, desire. And that's their desire for us because we caught up into that, into their intimate desire that we're made in the image of. So. It, it removes all these efforts and try of, of like us trying because we're one with their desire like our design is their desire and we're flowing we're flowing in this seamless thing you know because god you know god's fully jesus is fully god and fully man in one person and he's not schizophrenic he's not trying to do my god will my man will but his god and man will in one person jesus christ and now our man desire our man will is one with his will which is to desire delight in him in his fullness everywhere and everything and we're sharing that with everyone and we're being guided in that flow of joy righteousness peace joy in the holy ghost is intimate knowing from the inside out you know the kingdom of god is within you you're, you're living true righteousness which means two parties finding likeness in each other peace you know you're, you're totally connected you're totally at peace and, and wellness in each other and your joy you're happy with each other the trinity's happy with us so yeah, we're happy with everyone and everything's there Everything's provided, but yeah, guys, this I gotta sh end this soon because uh, my my time's gonna run out here. Uh, but uh, on this computer, uh, but I love you guys. Uh, contemplation, Lord Jesus, Abba, and Holy Spirit. I thank you that 
contemplation is this easy, effortless thing that you awaken us to in, in the depths of our being. We get to sit there and just be these lazy, love drunk, truly this lazy river. Not 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 bad laziness, but and just going around blessing everyone with us. And as you bless us, we get to just live so like little babies just at rest on the breast of El Shaddai. I love you guys. In Jesus' name, amen.